Hello there, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com. It's the free website for everything Photoshop, Lightroom, and anything else we find interesting. In this video, we're gonna take an introduction to 3D, and we're gonna create this very simple scene. But hopefully it'll be enough to get you going and experimenting with 3D yourself. Okay, let's jump into Photoshop and see how it's done. So here I am in Photoshop, and what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna create a new document. So I'm gonna to go to File and New. I'm gonna make this one 1,000 pixels wide by 500 pixels deep. And then I'm gonna make a resolution of 300 pixels per inch, and I'm gonna call it Tip Squirrel Can. There we go. And click OK. Okay, what I want to do now is make the can itself and the actual outside like a, a label, as it were. So you can see that I've got the tip squirrel colors already down here, the orange is there, so I'm gonna make a nice gradient and just bring that out like that for the background. Now, all the graphics I need are inside my libraries. So if I bring that up, I can then bring in my logo. Let's bring this up a little bit. There we go. And I can bring the squirrel in. This logo was drawn and designed for us by Mark Griffin of Griffin Design, and there's places to find him on screen right now. Okay, let's make that just about there, right dead center, click the tick. All right, I'm gonna go down and get another of our logos. There we go. Again, this is a PNG, so it has no background or a see-through background as it were. There we go, and we'll pop that one in the middle-ish. There we go, like that, click the tick. On the other side, I want some text, so it sort of replicates ingredients and stuff like that. I'm not gonna type all that in. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the type tool, draw a box just like that, and then go to type and then fill with uh, lorem ipsum, paste lorem ipsum, there we go. Select it all, make it much smaller, all the way down, maybe three or four pixels even. And let's change the text there, something nice and simple and change it to black. There we go, or even smaller. Okay, something along those lines. Let's go up a little bit more. There we go, click the tick. All right, now that's uh, still a little bit big. It's overlapping my logo there, so we can bring that down a little bit. There we go. And bring that out a little bit to the side as well. And let's take it up. All right. Now, some of these details we may not see in the final piece, but it's good to know they're there. We can use them later on. Okay, I want this to be completely non-destructive, but I also need it into one layer so that we can wrap it around a soda can. To do that, I'm just gonna make a smart object. So click on the top layer, shift and click on the bottom layer, then right click and say convert to a smart object. And there we go. We can always go back and change it and it's all in one layer. Now to get this on a soda can, Really, really easy. I'm gonna to go to 3D, new mesh from layer, and then if you come to mesh presets, you can see you can wrap it around all kinds of shapes. I'm gonna wrap it around soda, and there we go. It goes and does its thing, and there it is. There's my soda can. Now you'll notice that we've got these squares. This is actually called the ground plane, and it's the reference point for where the ground is and where the horizon meets the sky, that kind of thing. So we're gonna to have to bear that in mind when we're moving this around. To move it around, well, first of all, I'm gonna go into the 3D workspace. You may have been asked to do this when you first make a 3D object. I'm gonna go into 3D workspace, and now I've got properties available to me, and I've got this extra panel down here, which is called 3D. Underneath there, you can see that I've got soda. If I tap on that, now we've got these arrows come up on the soda can. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit so we can see what's going on. Now, these arrows have several functions. First of all, at the tip of each arrow, you'll see that there is an arrow point. That'll move it within the plane. So along the X axis, the Y axis, and then the Z axis. There we go. So I can position this anywhere I like just by using the arrows. Moving towards the middle, we've then got another little icon here, which actually turns it along that axis. There we are. Now it's the same for the blue there. You can see that when it goes around, you might be able to see it just come into view there. But it's not very easy to use when it's looking right at you. 
underneath that there's like a rectangle and this will scale along that as well so if I scale this there I can squash or elongate the can. Okay finally there's one right in the middle as well there's another square right in the middle or a cube which will scale it entirely on all axes there we go. Okay good. Now if you're playing around with something like this it's very easy to get lost where it is and what's happened to it. The easiest way to sort that out is to come up to the properties and to this second icon. Tap on that and then just reset them all. Reset coordinates. There we go. Now you notice that my can has actually gone below the ground plane. I can go move to ground and up it pops. We're all back to square one. Okay, let's position this where we want it or roughly where we want it, sort of somewhere down there. I may even turn this little bit as well. There we go. Cool. All right, there we are. I'm gonna put a nice gradient behind that. So I'm gonna just close this all down so it makes it a bit neater. New layer, pop that behind it, gradient. Now notice my gradient has disappeared and that's because I'm in the 3D workspace. So within a workspace, you can have the tools as well as the panels that you want. To find it, the easiest way I'm gonna do that is to go back to essentials and then I can just find that. There we go, gradient. And I'm going to pull out the gradient there. Okay, good. All right. Now you'll notice that uh, I can't see any of the 3D handles or anything like that now because I'm on a non-3D layer. And that's quite helpful. If you want to see how things are looking, just put in a non-3D layer and you keep flipping backwards and forwards. All right, let's go back to my 3D layer. And then let's go back to the 3D workspace. Back to 3D. There's my soda can. Now also when you're working in 3D, if you've got the move tool, you'll see that we've got several move tools available to us and these will work in different ways. They can get out of control quite quickly. You may notice that if I click on this one and then I can rotate it here, it'll sort of go for a bit of free form. Um, also with this one, there we go. And uh, this one will go up and down and round and round. Okay, I'm gonna go and reset all those and then move it back. But they're there, should I wish to use them. And, you know, working actually on the document, it can be helpful. There we go. And move that around just a little bit. Also, while we're in the move tool, you'll notice that this white circle has appeared on the top. And that actually shows us where the light source is coming from. If I tap on that, you'll notice down in the 3D panel that Infinite Light 1 became available. And we've got this handle in the middle. I can start moving that around and choose where my light source is coming from. I can also change the intensity of that. If I go up to the properties and the first one, you'll see that I can change a lot here as well. Okay, cool. Shadow, softness, maybe quite a soft shadow. There we are. All right, now I wanna put some text in there. So I'm gonna click on the text and then click down and I'm gonna type tipsquirrel.com. Squirrel dot, whoops, dot. There we go. And I'm going to make that a lot bigger. Maybe not that big. And let's change the font as well. Impact's a bit much. Let's go something that's nice. There we go. All right. Now you'll notice it's not interacting with the 3D layer at all. And in fact, in the layers panel, you'll see that it's a normal layer and not part of anything three dimensional. Now, if I had a normal shape, if I made something with the pen tool or with the shapes, I could now extrude this, just coming into the 3D, and then I could extrude from the shape. But notice that wasn't available to me when I'm using text, but it is available in the type. So if I go to type, extrude to 3D. And then what that's gonna do is make it into a 3D object. I can move it around just as I did before with the soda can, but you'll notice the ground plane is in a completely different place. If I start moving this around, I can go underneath the ground plane and start interacting with the soda can, but the perspective is all wrong. I'm gonna go and just reset all those. What I need to do is to put them both in the same 3D layer, and that's nice and easy. If I click on one and then shift and click on the other, I can then come up to 3D and merge 3D layers. And now they're all part of the one 3D scene. So now, 
my tipsquirrel.com has now got the same perspective as my soda can. In the 3D panel, you'll see that tipsquirrel.com has got a little place now, as well as the soda can. Cool. So I'm going to go onto the tipsquirrel.com and put that roughly where I want it. Let's move that around, perhaps, something like that. Okay, I'm liking this. Maybe move that out a little bit and up. Okay, there you go. Now, because they're part of the same 3D scene, you can see that the shadow is being cast by the tip squirrel onto the can, and it's taking the shape of the can too. It's really nice. Black isn't really working for me here, but in the first icon here in my properties, because I've got the text layer active, I can now change the color of the text. So I'm gonna click on that and make it a nice orangey type color as well. There we go. Good. Now you can also change the color of the extrusion and all kinds of other things, but that's for another day perhaps. Right now we're just looking at the very basics. All right, let's get that somewhere where I want it. That's good, I like that. You'll notice as well that I can put it in front, but if I push it back, it will go behind or even through the can as well. So it's all interacting nicely. Okay, let's bring that across. All right. Now what I'd like to do now is to have a reflection of the can. Now this time I need to go into environment and there's a lot that I can change here. And again, this is perhaps for another time or for some experimentation. At the bottom of the first icon, you'll notice we have reflections. We can change the color if we wish and the opacity and the roughness. I'm gonna bring the opacity quite high here to about 90-ish percent. There we go. And I'm gonna bring the roughness up this would be quite helpful if it was on sand or on concrete, something like that. But actually, for this, I want it nice and smooth. So I'm going to take the roughness right down. Just like earlier, I can go to my Layers panel and then down to a non-3D layer. Click on that to just see how things are coming along. And that's looking good, but I think the reflection is just a little bit too much. Back to my 3D layer, back to 3D, and then bring down the opacity of that. I'm going to bring it down to roughly about 40-ish percent. There we go layers and then layer one and that's looking a bit better but it'd be nice if tipscroll.com was also reflected and that's easy because it's part of the same 3d scene all i have to do is go to my 3d over to tip squirrel bring it down and sure enough there's the reflection of it and as i get to the ground plane there it meets it i might take it a little bit up perhaps there we go all right let's bring that up so it's floating, nice. And then bring it around a little bit more, I think. There. Okay. Go back to the Move tool, Layers, Layer 1. Made a very simple scene right here in Photoshop and in 3D. I'm Eric Rennie, thank you very much for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and give me a thumbs up if this has been helpful. I'll see you again at tipsquirrel.com very, very soon. Until then, bye-bye for now.